Hey guys, it's Travis with BPNorthwest.com. Today we're going to install a carpet kit on your British car. Now I'm doing it on my 72 Spitfire, but it doesn't really matter what kind of car you're doing it on because it's all the same stuff. Uh, you need some very basic tools to do this and we're going to show you what they are. The first thing that you need, of course, is your new carpet kit. You're also going to need some box end wrenches, a 7 16 a half, uh, a 9 16 you're also going to need a ratchet set with the same sockets. You're going to want uh, a couple of rags as well as some acetone to get that metal really clean so you can get good, uh, good adhesion. And then you're going to want some uh, spray adhesive. Now the best stuff that you can get is actually a 3M trim adhesive. Uh, you can find that online, usually like uh, Amazon.com or something like that. I'm going to use this Loctite Heavy Duty adhesive. It's good for metal and carpet and so forth. Um, we're also going to put in a new transmission tunnel. Now the original transmission tunnels are treated cardboard. So it's going to let a lot of heat and a lot of noise through. So since we're going all the way down and, and taking all the carpet out, this is just going to be a couple of additional bolts, and this is a real nice upgrade for you to put into your car. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in a, uh, a spray insulation in our car. Now we're not going to show you what it is or tell you what it is because we want to test it out before we recommend it to you. But if it's worth a darn, we're going to let you know what it is and, and what it's going to take to install it. Well, that's it. The first thing we need to do is uh, go over to our car and start pulling the seats out. Now slide your seat all the way forward. There's a little latch in the back that you can uh, flip and your seat's going to flip forward. And once you do that, you're going to see that there's two bolts in the back inside that slide arm. Now this is where you're going to want to take your 7 16 inch wrench and take those bolts out. Once you get the two back ones out, there's two in the front that you need to take out as well. Now that your seats are out, go ahead and take out your armrest and your center uh, console. And then uh, the next part is we're going to take off this uh, support bracket. Now that our center parts are out, we're going to take our half inch socket. We're going to take these four bolts out. There's two on each side of this uh, brace. And then you're going to need a 7 16 box wrench and uh, there's two bolts up underneath that attach this support to the dash. Now if you have any trouble getting your bracket out, here's a little trick for you. Once you get all the bolts out, take both your hands and slide the bottom of this back and uh, that's going to get it to a point where it could probably pop out. You may have to get and put a little bit of pressure on the dashboard just to get enough clearance to get it to drop loose and then it should slide right out. Now that that's done, go ahead and start peeling up all your old carpet and taking it out. One thing that I like to do is lay it all out exactly the way it came out of your car. That way with your new kit, you can go and lay your new piece of carpet on top of your old piece of carpet and you know exactly where every single piece is going to go. Now that you got all your carpet out, you're going to want to grab a scraper and scrape everything that's kind of stuck down, dried on mud and so forth uh, to get it out of there. Also, you're going to want to check if you see a little bit of surface rust, you're going to want to check that and make sure that it's not rusted all the way through. If it is, you're going to want to repair that before you start. If it's just surface rust, you're going to want to repair that uh, with a good red oxide primer and maybe a coat of paint uh, before you put the new carpet on. If it's uh, totally gone, if you have a lot of rust through these floorboards, you're going to want to give us a call. We have weld-in panels that you can put in your car to fix that. Uh, and we're going to shoot a video on that soon. Now that your repair work is done, go ahead and grab your acetone, a couple of rags. I like to use these uh, Scotch-Brite pads. And just scrub everything real good and clean. Now remember, if you did do some welding in here, make sure that everything's cool to the touch before you hit it with this acetone. Now before we start putting everything back together, go ahead and grab your grease gun and hit this zerk right here in the U-joint. Put a few squeezes in there. 
uh, while it's easy to access. Now we're ready to start putting everything back together. The first thing that you want to do is you want to prepare your dog house for reinstallation. Now if you're going to stick with your old one, make sure that you scrape off. It's either going to be a foam rubber type material or if it's from the factory, it's going to be kind of a rubbery type uh, material. You want to scrape that clean and you want to replace it with new uh, foam. And you want to do a closed cell foam because it's weatherproof, waterproof. And you always want to make it a little bit thicker if you have a lift. You want to make it a little bit thicker to give it some room to, to kind of squish down and seal up good. Now that we got our foam installed on our dog house, it's time to go ahead and slide it into place. Now that the dog house is in, go ahead and fit your dash support in. Just to check and see, you, you may have to trim a little bit of this uh, lip right here to make this thing fit correctly. To do it, use a Dremel tool or maybe a, uh, a good sharp razor blade or carpenter's knife. Now let's go ahead and start installing our carpet. Grab your glue and shake it up really well. I like to start by coating the doghouse with the glue and then uh, once you're done with that, Go ahead and coat the back side of the carpeting set uh, with some glue. Let it sit for about a minute or two and get real tacky to the touch. It's going to make a more permanent bond. Now once you've got it in and in place, you've got it glued down, but you haven't glued the flaps yet, go ahead and put your, uh, <clears throat> put your brace in place. That way you know where to mark off the carpet where you need to puncture a hole and go ahead and secure this piece. Now remember, as you put these in, this is not an absolute perfect fit because, uh, you know, these Spitfires are different between all the years that they made them. So you're going to need a carpenter's knife uh, with a good sharp razor in it, and you're going to have to trim just a little bit in certain spots. Also, always try and keep a little bit of extra if there's extra. Roll it down onto the floorboard, and then put your floor mats in last. That way it's going to overlap on the bottom. And when it comes to throwing the pieces in that go over this cross member, just remember there's a little hump and the, uh, the hump is going to sit lower. So this makes it, this the passenger side. And remember the ribbing goes to the outside. Now when putting the center piece in, um, make sure that the wide part goes to the back. And when you put the front part in, it can either go under the carpet for the doghouse or over it. It's up to you. Now that your carpet's all installed, here's a great little trick to figure out where your bolts are going to go for your seats and your seat belts. If you have an awl uh, or just take a nail and stick it into a pair of vice grips, get up underneath and feel where that bolt's going to go and then poke up through the carpet. And once you do that, you can take a, I just took a, a, a nail finish and I set them down inside there. Then what I'm going to do is i got a piece of metal, this is just another old nail set, uh, and I'm going to heat it up and then put it right down in the hole there and just kind of melt that carpet just a little bit so you have a nice perfect hole uh, when it's time to put your seats in.
put your seat belts back in, always remember, just put a little bit of anti-seize on those bolts. So someday if you ever have to take them back out, they won't get seized up and stuck on you. Now if your seat rails look like mine do, you may want to clean them up and put a, a coat of rust preventative paint on them before you stick it on your new carpet. <clears throat> now that you got a coat of paint on your, uh, on your rails, if you can see, I'm going to try and see if I can shine a light in here and show you guys. There's a set of rollers in there, uh, and there's two on each side. And what you want to do before you put these things back in, I just have some white lithium grease here, and I'm just going to give them a little shot just to keep them rolling smooth. Well, that's how you install a new carpet kit on your British car. As always, if you have any snags along the way while you're putting yours in, give us a call. We'll help you walk through it. Also, if you have any future projects coming up that you'd like to see us get down on film, give us a call at 503-864-2001 or drop us an email at howto at bpnorthwest.com. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm.